Hey guys, welcome to Food, Drinks, and Rock and Roll Live. I'm Chef Nathan Lippy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make an old school favorite, meatloaf. Where we're gonna wrap it with bacon, throw some cool ingredients in it, you're gonna love it. And that's all right now here on Food, Drinks, and Rock and Roll. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna caramelize some onions and peppers. Pretty simple. This is gonna add a great flavor to our meatloaf. So we're gonna add this to our raw meat in just a minute. So we're gonna dice some red onion and some red bell pepper. Add a bit of olive oil to a saute pan over medium high heat. Then we're gonna add our peppers and our onions and caramelize them a bit. Let these go for about three or four minutes. We want to bring out some of that natural sweetness and it's going to add a ton of flavor on the inside of our meatloaf. While our onions and peppers are caramelizing, let's work on our side dish. We're going to do some rosemary roasted potatoes. Really simple. It's one of those things that just tastes good and feels good. So we're basically going to take our potatoes and we're going to cut them into small wedges. Now here's the trick to getting great roasted potatoes. Take a bowl and we're going to add our potatoes right to the big bowl. Then we're gonna add a bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper, then toss on all sides to make sure the potatoes get coated with the rosemary, the salt and pepper, and the olive oil. That's gonna make sure the entire potato gets caramelized and crispy. Once the potatoes are nice and coated with all the herbs and the salt and pepper and the oil, we're gonna add them into a nice little baking dish. Then we're gonna throw these in a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. Once the onions and peppers are nice and caramelized, we're gonna add about a half a tablespoon of chopped garlic at the very end. You see garlic cooks really, really quick, so we don't want it to burn. Just give it a nice little toss, and let that cook for an additional minute and a half. Now it's time to assemble our meatloaf. It's really simple, this is how it works. So it starts with the ground beef, about a pound, in a big bowl, and we're gonna add our vegetables right over the top, just like that. We're gonna add one egg, a few shakes of Worcestershire sauce, like five or eight shakes, a couple of shakes of soy sauce, a few shakes of Tabasco sauce, about a half a tablespoon of whole grain mustard, and also some breadcrumbs. A lot of people make their meatloaf with a ton of breading. I like to stay nice and light, just enough so that the meatloaf will bind itself together because we don't want it falling apart completely, but we don't want it to be like a brick either, you know what I'm saying? And last but not least, a bit of salt and pepper. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna take a wooden spoon and we're gonna stir everything up. All right, now I'll be the first to admit, meatloaf is not the most attractive dish in the whole world. So I'm gonna show you a neat little trick to make it a bit more beautiful. So start with our mix and go right down the center of a sheet tray. I have a sill pat, which is basically a little non-stick little guy that just makes life a whole lot easier. So we're basically gonna put down our meatloaf right in the center of the dish. We're gonna form it into a nice loaf shape, just like that. Not too tight, we want it to be nice and light. Now here's the beautiful trick. We're gonna take some bacon strips, just regular bacon. I'm using thick cut uh, maple bacon. I'm gonna cut them in half, so check this out. Cut them in half, then you're gonna bring them over to your meatloaf, and we're gonna start this braiding pattern. So let some of it hang off the edge, just like that, and let the other, other side come over the top. Then we're gonna repeat the process on the other side, create this little X pattern. Then we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna repeat the process until the whole meatloaf is covered, just like that. All right, so now you'll notice right here on the sides, we've got this little bit of, of overhang of the bacon. That's for a purpose. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use our hands and tuck it up underneath the meatloaf. So this is gonna hold the bacon in place. So you see how it just kind of tucks underneath like a nice little, little beautiful envelope, just like that. Just like that, and we're all ready to go. So now we're gonna put this into the same 350 degree oven that we have our potatoes in for about 45 minutes. 
Once your meatloaf has been cooking for about 45 minutes, we should be all finished. Let's take it out and have a look at it. That is what I'm talking about. So you see we've got this beautiful meatloaf and the bacon has gotten really golden and crispy over the top. Our potatoes should be finished too, so we'll pull those out. And this is how we plate the dish. You'll notice there's some dark colored stuff on the bottom. That's okay, that stuff is a little bit burnt, but that's fine because that's all the excess juices and sugars that have come out from the meatloaf. So don't be afraid, it's not your meatloaf, it's just some of the extra goodies that we don't need. So we're gonna pull our meatloaf off, do a cutting board. I like to use a bread knife because of the bacon. It keeps the bacon intact. So I'm gonna take my tongs and my bread knife and do nice thin slices. See, it's nice and soft on the inside. It's not super thick and dense like a brick. That's what you don't want in your meatloaf. To plate, start with some of your potatoes right down just off center of the plate. Then we're gonna take a few slices of our beautiful meatloaf right over on the side. What better to go with meatloaf than ketchup? So I'm gonna show you a cool little garnishing trick. So we got a little squeeze bottle. Just gonna do nice thin little strips. There we go, look at that. That's good looking. You notice the meatloaf is nice and tender. It's not thick, not too dense. It's still nice and tender and juicy. These potatoes are really great. When we toss them in the bowl, actually that oil got coated all around the potato, so it's almost like a french fry on the outside and a nice soft roasted potato on the inside. It's really delicious. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Make sure you go to facebook.com slash chef Nathan Lippy, twitter.com slash chef Nathan Lippy to find all the pics, some more videos and lots of fun stuff like that. You can also join me live every Saturday on ustream.tv slash food, drinks, and rock and roll. That's live every Saturday on Ustream TV, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll hook up there and we'll share a bunch of fun recipes and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Be sure to send me some comments or some, uh, some requests. If you guys want me to teach you how to make something in particular, just say, hey, Nate, I want you to make this, this, or that. It'll be fun. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.